Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cash Flow Joe podcast presented by Pips Path to Property. I'm Pip Stellick, and here at Cash Flow Joe, we're here to help beginning investors with their first transaction and ex seasoned or experienced investors how to make more money in this real estate game. Our company trains and mentors thousands of students all over the world to become successful investors. For more information, visit our website at pipspath.com, where we have tons of free resources. I'm excited today because I have a great person that we're going to be interviewing. Uh, It's amazing. All the people that I interview seem to be great, but this guy is great plus a little bit. At least that's what I'm going to say today. And this is a guy that I haven't known that long, but... Sometimes it's cool to when you meet new people and, and you just start to hit it off. We've already been on a trip together. We're getting ready to go on another trip to Mexico here real soon. Uh, Shane Sams, how are you today, my friend? Because I'm hanging out with you, bro. It is always good to see my boy Pip Stella in the house, man. But I can't, and I, you know, I, when I first met you, I never could have imagined we'd be hanging out recording your own very own podcast. This is pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, and you don't think you could believe it? I couldn't believe it either. This is not my world. (laughs) My world is all about getting in front of people and standing on a stage and talking. So this talking into a computer and a microphone is kind of weird. So Yeah, it is kind of weird, man. But there could be thousands of people out there, man. They're real humans just like those people in our seminars that we do, dude. So Isn't that crazy? They could be out there listening, and they're listening on their, you know, where where they don't have to, you know, wait to go to the bathroom. They can go anytime they want. They can just hit pause. They don't even have to hit pause. They could take us with them into the bathroom right now and keep listening to our voices right (laughs) that is tmi in my opinion too much information uh that's a bad video in my opinion so shane tell us a little bit about your background you can take as long as you need to everybody will love that kentucky accent i'm sure tell us a little bit about your story where you come from what you do i know this is real estate but guess what it's all about entrepreneurs and real estate is a way to get an entrepreneur but shane's going to show you a whole new way and our business has totally changened because of what we learned from Shane. So Shane, go. go for it. Hey man, I got some real estate. I got some land. You got you to do something with all your money that you make online, right? The, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, yeah, man. My name's Shane Sams. And, um, you know, I did not set out to be an entrepreneur or an investor or like anything like that. Um, I actually went to school uh, to be a teacher. I was a school teacher. I taught U.S. history to high school juniors for about 10 years. Um, and I probably would still be on that path today, Pip, if uh, something had not happened. Um, had a bad situation go down with my son at a daycare center and, uh, I needed the day off work and, um, I got into school a little late that day and my boss basically told me you can't have the day off work. You, you, I, there's not, you got, you're he's out of that situation. He's not where he's, you got to help him right now. And you know, you, you got to handle your personal problems after work, man. You got to take care of your, your business. And something lit on fire in me that day, man. I was just like, this person can tell me what to do. Holy crap. Like I literally, because this person pays my checks, you know, writes their name on the bottom of my checks. They think they can tell me when I can be there, how many days, how many sick days, if I can go pick up my kids, like what time they literally control me. They, they control my life. And I decided to start looking for something else to do with my life besides working for other people. So I started looking at some different business models and I found out there was this thing called online business where you could literally sell um, basically education products. You could sell communities. You could sell coaching. Like you could work with people one-on-one. You could do all these things and you could do it over a conference call. You could get on Zoom and talk to people. You could post courses and people could watch them. So you record it once and they could pay you for them forever. And I was like, this sounds absolutely amazing. So I started uh, trying to do all this stuff uh, and I was a miserable failure as most of us are, whether it's our trying to buy real estate for a first time or uh, entrepreneurship. Like I hate to tell you all this, guys. There's no such thing as an overnight success. You're <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have to strike out a couple times before you get that first base hit. Um, but I started doing some things. I started learning some things, and eventually my wife got involved, Jocelyn, because she's we made a little money on the internet. And uh, long story short, was we started a company called ElementaryLibrarian.com, uh, where we were selling lesson plans to librarians. Now I know that sounds like out of left field, but my wife was a librarian, and she was a very good one. And we we're like, I wonder if people would pay us to get access to videos and PDFs where they could use them in their classroom and then they wouldn't have to plan their own lessons. Uh, Most people don't know this, but librarians have to prepare about five times more information than most teachers in any school because they teach every uh, grade every day. Like they might have first grade, first period, fifth grade, second period, and they've got to sit at home 
and plan those lessons. Five, le it takes probably an hour for every 30 minutes of lesson that you have to produce. So like they're sitting there four or five hours a night trying to make all these lesson plans for all these different classes. And we thought we could save them time. We could save them energy. We could give them their afternoons back with their kids. So we launched this podcast called Elementary Librarian and uh, people started listening. Uh, a couple hundred people started listening to that, librarians across the country. And then we said, hey, will you you know, buy these lesson plans if we sell them to you for 49 bucks a month or whatever. And um, people said yes, but there's a lot of people that talk the talk, Pip. A lot of people talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And I, and I have found that I can only trust people that vote with their wallet. So, so I said, okay, prove it. Give us money and then we'll make it for you, right? Here's a button. You give us some money and within three weeks, we'll get you your first month of uh, lesson plans, right? And that very first month, we made almost the same amount of money one of us made as school teachers in Southeast Kentucky. Uh, that thing grew and grew and grew uh, to the point where one, we were able to eventually quit our jobs and become full-time entrepreneurs. And um, that became an asset. We actually sold that business in 2017. Uh, it was a contract for like $1.1 million. We got 800,000 up front or something like that. It was bonkers. Like I'm not, I'm just a dude from Kentucky, man. I didn't know that the, I didn't know that the, the calculator had that many zeros on the end of it. Right. Like I didn't know what was going on, man. I it would have took me 36 years to make that much money as a school teacher. Right. Just my salary. And, um, and we invested that back into other online businesses. Uh, what we do today is flip lifestyle where we teach people, um, how to make extra money on the internet. Um, we teach people how to start businesses like membership communities where you get monthly recurring revenue, coaching co communities, uh, sell courses, um, and basically create either extra margin in your life. Uh, maybe you want 2000, 3000 extra dollars a month. Um, or maybe you want to make two or 3000 extra dollars a month to invest in stocks or real estate or whatever you want to do. Um, just how do you, just getting extra money. Some people go in and they want to quit their jobs and go full-time entrepreneurship, but we kind of run the gamut from the side hustlers all the way up to the people who are like, I'm kicking the man in the butt and walking out the door. So that's the nutshell, man. That's how I got here to talk to you today. That's a nutshell, man. I've heard a lot longer version of that. I think I've heard a two hour version of that at one point. It feels like a <laughs> six hour version. I've got sometimes. them all. I got the one minute version. I got yeah. the elevator version. What are we talking about? If 20 minute podcast. That's my 20 minute <laughs> podcast version. You know, so I got I'm going to go back because I, I mean, I like to get to know people a little bit. So born and raised in Kentucky. Yeah, man. Southeast Kentucky. Born and raised. Remain today, baby. Got a, got a, I'm actually from the town where KFC was invented. The Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders cooked his first bucket of chicken in my hometown we got a statue of him in the middle of the of the, of the place what's the what, what what's the name of that town it's called corbin it's called corbin and it's got it's in laurel county uh, knox and laurel county down here and it's got a uh we got we got a museum about the colonel too it's called sanders cafe but just a little bitty town about ten thousand people friday night lots you know everybody's at the football field on fridays and that's where it goes I, man i literally just my wife and i just watched on netflix the friday night lights series that's that was amazing I'd, I'd not seen that and i grew up playing football and everything else so you grew up playing football i'm betting in high school i did i did i played uh up to about halfway through my high school career and uh, it's a funny story i got my knee got destroyed uh one night i tore my acl pcl mcl and lcl i can't even spell everything. half those yeah i know exactly. I, basically my leg was held together by an artery and skin right and uh then they had to take parts out of my left knee to fix the right knee so that one, I was, I was basically, I, I didn't go to school for like months and I couldn't walk. I had to figure out how to walk again, all that good stuff. And, um, but that's actually kind of what led me into teaching because I, people can probably relate to this. There's times in your life where you have an identity and you feel like you might lose your identity a little bit. Right. And that can cause like, you know, you get depressed and you don't really know where you're going. Like I was a football player. I mean, I was an athlete. That's all I did growing up, you know, and my brothers played sports and my mom was always like, she wanted her kids to play sports and that really changed the trajectory of my life because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. But when I got out of high school and I was going to college, you know, my dad was like, Hey, get you a teaching degree. There's always going to be teachers. And, um, you know that, and I thought, man, that would be interesting because teachers get to coach football. So I, I actually, you know, when I got hurt in football, that, that, that horrible event, like led me to becoming a school teacher, becoming a football coach. I even got to coach college football for a while, for a couple of years at a, West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky. So it's funny how like those really challenging moments in your life uh, can lead you to something better, something greater, or even something you never even considered doing, you know, like maybe there's something going on in your listeners' lives where they're like, man, I want to do something different and investing might be a way out of that. Real estate might be a way out of that. But like 
you can springboard off those negative things and you know they lead you down the path that you go they, then you have another event that's horrible and you're like oh well that makes me change directions again and maybe you go to you can totally take your identity off and on as many times as you want in life if you just keep doing it um i'm going to come back to football because i could talk sports all day long but it's interesting because you named your company flipped lifestyle and mm -hmm. it's because the flip the script got flipped on you and so what you're saying, I think, is a pretty cool thing that any listener can uh, take something from is that take a bet because there's a lot of people, they get a bad event in their life and maybe they can overcome it once. But when it happens a second or third time, it's just like, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm done. I, I, you know, God doesn't want me to do this or that. So interesting to hear you say that. And so I yes. think that's that's very amazing how you how you put that out there. So what kept what gave you the drive? You know, when you what year did you hurt your knee? uh 90 something well how Four. what grade were you in what grade were you in sophomore i think okay so yeah, you weren't sophomore. even very far into your career no 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 and i i had just started for on varsity the first time like the week before and then uh and then i got hurt in a freaking jv game the next week and i was starting on friday night i just gotten in uh the, it was crazy man you know because i was like fighting for this position i was like you know, there was a couple seniors and like, I was like, oh, I think I can take that guy's job. And like, so like, I just got into the cusp of like, wow, I'm literally going to start on Fridays. Uh, and I, and I got hurt and you know, the cat, what's funny is I, I actually call those catalysts now and, um, you know, flip your life does mean, it means flipping the world upside down, building a life you want of choice. Like, um, there's some deeper meanings behind the, why we called it that as well. Like some of our teaching methods, but like, you know, it, it, I didn't really have that drive for a long time, you know, for a couple of years in high school, they wouldn't, I kept trying to rehab and kept trying to get them to release me to play. That was the first step was trying to get back the old life. Right. But that didn't work out, you know, and then that left me kind of in, you know, a bad spot where I had to replace that with anything I could replace it with, whether it was lifting weights or going to school, like just anything at all to kind of have something um, to kind of fill the void for a little while. And usually you, what, what actually made me pursue football is I was getting close to getting out of college and my friend's dad, I mean, he actually just passed away, man. His name was Terry. He, um, we were, we were playing cards one night. I used to play cards with him and his dad all the time. And, you know, we were just sitting there playing cards and he was like, are you, you okay? And I'm like, I'm a little bummed, man. I'm a little depressed, you know, I'm doing some things and, you know, and getting ready to graduate school college and you know i guess i'm gonna be a teacher maybe and i hadn't even thought about football yet um i just thought it was it'd be interesting if you could do that and he was like well if you could do anything what would you do and i said man you know what i'd love to do i'd love to coach college football that would be cool like i'd like to skip that whole teaching thing and just go coach college football and he just believed in me he said shane you can do that if you want to you just have to make that call and go out and prove that you can you gotta go figure out how to do it so i started looking around and you know, I found that there were like actual like master's degree programs where you could go like learn how to be like a coach or an athletic director and stuff like that. So I started pursuing that and I ended up coaching at a high school that had some good players. I ended up meeting some college coaches. And, you know, once I got the ball rolling um, with just try, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to make it happen. I just took that first step of, well, I guess I'll go here. Then I walked down to the local high school and I said, I guess I'll volunteer. I don't know what else to do. Right. And then like, uh, then I was like, uh, I volunteered that only thing they let me do is record the, ca the games. And I was like, well, can I go help the freshman team? And they let me help the freshman team. And then, uh, then, uh, the, the athletic director was like, I ain't got time to walk all these college football coaches around to talk to these recruits. Do you want to do it? And I'm like, yes, I want to do that. And I just kept putting myself in the right place to be in the right place at the right time. And I ended up meeting some people to get a graduate assistant job in a college. And like, so it wasn't like this big, like, how did you, how did you overcome that? How did you do? I stumbled forward into the dark, <laughs> which is pretty much how I built my business and everything I've ever done, man. Like you, you just got to try and see what happens. And I've been hit in the face along the way. Many, many times, man, like many, many times. My, my first year as a head coach, Pip, I don't know if I've ever told you this. I was Owen 10 and I got running clocked. Eight out of the 10 games, I think. It may, it may have been nine, to be honest with you. I think the last one was semi-competitive and maybe one was like a forfeit. But the uh, but like it was bad, right? So like even even switching careers and doing all those things, you know, I got my identity back in that era of my life by just I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went and did something. That's cool. I mean, and, and you think about that. I, I talk a lot about a book by Robert Kiyosaki where he says work to learn. 
And you did that in a lot of phases. You you put yourself in a place to get to where you needed to be. So what position did you play in, 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 in football? Now, I got to guess. Don't tell me. I have no idea. I just know how tall you are. I mean, on this camera, you look like you could be 6'5", uh, but in I real was, life, he's not. I'm going to go with fullback. No. Fullback. I was a fullback. I was a fullback. We ran the eye, so I was a fullback. And um, and then I played uh, like a strong safety uh, kind of position, like a hybrid position on yeah. defense. Yeah, good run stopper, but I could get to the flats real fast if I needed to be there, you know, stuff like that. So well, we we could definitely talk football for days because yeah, I played a lot and I, we we ran the eye. We ran a almost a veer back in the eighties when and we were from Nebraska. So the option football there was what it was all about. So yeah, we could talk oh, yeah. about that all day. We didn't long, run so. option. We just we just went power straight at you. Let's go. <laughs> like we, we didn't we we're 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 gonna win or we're gonna lose. That's what's gonna happen on Friday, you know. <laughs> They're not going to be un, uh, 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 you know, unaware of what we're going to do. We're just going to line up. We're going to run right at them. So, so I guess obviously you've talked a little bit about challenges. What, what's been your biggest success? I'm guessing selling the the librarian um, podcast. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, you know, we've had a we've been very blessed. We've had ups and downs. You know, there's been two or three times in our business where you know, like any business, cash cash flow gets low and things happen. And you got to rebuild and do some things, try some new stuff. Um, definitely selling elementary librarian.com was a great experience. Um, the, the best thing I think that came from that was one, we were able to invest money forward into our other business flip flop style. Uh, um, we're good. We made some good decisions and bad decisions with that money. Um, but we also at the, we paid off the house. Uh, that's actually this house that I use now as my studio in my office. We, uh, paid off our house when I was about 35 years old. So that was pretty cool. You know, like it was that, that felt like the biggest success in my life because I was like, man, we've got a, we, we can now take risks. We can now take chances. We had a piece of property and I know people argue about like good, bad, ugly of that, but I've got this, I got this, you know, two 1900 square foot house that, that nobody can take from me as long as I pay my taxes. That's pretty cool. You know? So you've got the, you got the fallback plan. And I felt like my family was kind of secure in that point. Like we'd always be warm, dry and fed. So that was good. Um, and you know, the last season we, we went through this, we, we built some seminar companies that did something crazy. I never even thought I could ever have pulled off. Like when I was approached to join the, the, the effort at the seminar company, um, where we met actually, um, I had no clue what I was doing. I only had like one person, two people on my team. And like, you know, within a couple of years, we built a, great team and we were doing good numbers and like and we were just stumbling forward man but i thought it was pretty crazy that we figured out how to do two-day events and figured out how to sell things and figured out how to go out every week and serve people and like pull off these amazing live events and shows and so i'm pretty super proud of the last season that we're in you know so but we kind of we kind of got out of that i was getting a little run ragged and some things weren't working out so we decided to leave that but um but those are those are some big things and it's funny like I think my biggest success, dude, is just I didn't fail miserably. I, I, I it sounds like I mean everybody's like, oh, you know, I want to do these numbers and I want to do this and that and the other. And I sometimes I look back and I'm like, holy crap, we're still in business. <laughs> like, like we're t like ten years ago, we scared to death with no money in the bank, resigned from our jobs just on a kind of a hope and a wing and a prayer, and um, and the last ten years has just been amazing i mean our kids have just got to experience something the life that like no we've been able to experience life that nobody else really gets to do and like you know it's all just by taking a chance being an entrepreneur um not giving up keep moving forward but just the fact i'm talking to you right now and you care what i say is pretty much maybe my biggest win Pip. <laughs> like that's pretty much where i'm at right now <laughs> i must be a really good actor because i'm not sure that i really care but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> maybe somebody out there cares i don't know I, yeah no i do it's all good i gotta have fun so no. i gotta ask you because i didn't even know what zoom was before covid happened when you first started doing your podcast and you were interviewing people what, what format were you even using then i don't even know what the technology was of the day well you know when we started out like it was 2013 2000 i think 2012 is when we first started a podcast so like it wasn't much different, really. I mean, if we had to do an interview, we would use two programs. We would have to use Skype. Remember Skype? And we I do. To, and we'd have to have a recorder that was baked into it. Like, that was interesting. Um, we did a lot of solo shows in the beginning. Like, so we didn't use Skype right away. We just used our own stuff. Um, we just talked on our own thing. But it was funny because, like, me and Joss on our first podcast, we didn't know how to record two microphones at the same time. And the only thing we could think to do was Skype each other in the kitchen 
and talk on two computers, but then there was an echo. It was a disaster. And then we, so we finally figured out how to use two microphones in our house. And then we had to learn how to, you know, do it online. And then the, and the internet was not the same back then as it is now. So like you calls would break up and it was terrible. Um, and yeah, we, it was cha technology was a real challenge back then. There wasn't like now a lot of the tools are easier to use, like to even to build a website, but, um, but we just kept, watching trainings just like anything else man buy a training watch it take action and figure it out and like, failing failing forward a little bit yeah be willing to take those risks forward. that's what you did yes we're willing to take risks we sold everything in our house like I, I remember i wanted to learn how to do email marketing and i had like three yard sales to afford the court the course uh apparently it's hard to get like 200 dollars or whatever it was just by getting nickels for uh old records from the 80s you know what i mean so like but i that's what we did and we just had to figure it out and you know failed forward as much as we could you're never going to figure it out until you do it like even if you watch the course and the course is perfect and then the course is right like, like the training the coach whatever it is like you got to do it and on, honestly you got to fail at it that's what's going to make you do it better you know our first seminars were disasters absolute disasters. I remember we started uh, our seminar company. The first event that I ever did, I ran out of material at 12 o'clock on Sunday. And I was like, Justin's like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I, I got up there and I had our course catalog. It was like a big thick book. And I stood up there. I, I, I had moved a podium to the front of the room because I wasn't using the podium. And I stood up there like a preacher and I like, open your books to page one. And I basically used my best radio voice. And I was like, here at Flip Lifestyle, we have a commitment. To what I was reading from my own book for like an hour and a half, and that's how we closed the show. Because <laughs> I was just like, well, so you just got to do it. But then I knew when I left, I was like, crap, I got to go make some more sessions. Then the next one, I was bell to bell, baby. I had an eight to five. Let's do it. Let's go. So, but I wouldn't have known that if I had not done it and messed it up. So it's impossible when you're doing something like even this. Unless you get oh, on yeah. and start doing it, you don't know how long it's going to take. I have no idea how long you're going to talk when I ask you a question. Nope. And so you got to be prepared for 25, 30 questions when maybe you only need two at the end of the day. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've gotten good enough on mine where I've just, I've got it so dialed in on the format and like I, and, and editing, like cutting people off and stuff like, like I can probably hit the 45 mark most time if I need to. But that I've also almost got a thousand podcasts under my belt, you know, so it just takes so much. You just got to go do stuff over and over and over again if you're going to be good at it. I think we've got maybe 40 podcasts underneath our belt right now. And these are we're just starting to interview people. Everything we did on our first podcast, we're just content, content, content. So yeah, this is different for me doing the interview stuff. So so I guess what's the dream project? What's what are the next you know, what's the next uh, project for you and Jocelyn as you're moving forward with Flip Lifestyle and anything else you got going on? You know, we, uh, we're we in a season um, right now, and I think this is probably a, it's an important thing to tell everybody about. Like, you know, we're in a season right now where I don't think we know exactly what we want to do next. We're kind of in maintenance mode on what we have. Um, you know, we've been doing this for 10 years. Flip Lifestyle is almost eight years old, and we've been online entrepreneurs for like 11 um, you know, so I feel some evolution happening. We just shut down our seminar company because that was, I think we're in more of a mode right now of what we don't want. We know what we don't want to build. We've learned enough, uh, through the last like 10 years to be like, okay, well, here's a list of the things we don't want to do next, right? We don't want to build X, Y, Z. Um, we're supporting our community. We're building our community podcasts coming out, all that stuff like flipped lifestyle, how it will evolve. I don't think we know right now. I think we're just in a period of, uh, of a uh, change, you know, because uh, in the last, you know, we, we decided to do a seminar company in 2020 when the pandemic hit <laughs> and like, we were like, oh, let's go build that. That sounds fun. The world's going to open again. We didn't know if we could pull it off. We did. Um, we loved a lot of things about it, but you know, there was a lot, a lot of the travel, a lot of the getting everybody trained, leading a big team. Like that's one thing that I'm changing definitely is getting a little bit smaller team from now on. Um, those are the things that we didn't know. And then when we shut that down, Pip, we kind of skid to a stop for a couple months, right? We tried a couple things that we didn't like. And then, um, you know, we finally just said, Hey, let's put this on pause. Let's stop. Let's slow down and let's figure out what we're going to do next and over time. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I don't have any big goals, ambitions, dreams, just kind of flip lifestyles, doing what it does. And we're teaching people how to start build and grow online businesses and um, you know, and we're kind of like taking a, a breath a little bit, 
Um, you know, a lot, when you change a lot in your life, like, and a lot of people may be going through this, your emotions get involved, man. You know, you're, you're always going to feel that identity crisis. You're always going to feel that imposter syndrome. Like, can I really be an investor? Can I really be an entrepreneur? And then like, even now, like we've just accomplished, we've come off a season of accomplishing huge things in our business, um, that have set us up very well for the future. But now it's even like, Oh, that imposter syndrome creaks in. Like, what can I build another thing? Can I do something else? Do I want to keep speaking? Do I want to keep all of these things creep in? And sometimes you got to sit and just feel the feelings and wrestle with it and, and do that too. So yeah, that's it's that roller coaster, man. We're all on entrepreneurship. It's a roller coaster. And I feel like right now I'm in the third upside down loop, uh, trying to just pray to God we get to the next section anytime soon. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. So. Even even though it's a roller coaster, most of those are pretty safe. So oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You're not gonna come yeah, off yeah. the tracks. You may you, you may feel like you're coming off the tracks. So that's cool. Yeah, 100%. The, uh, so obviously we have lots of entrepreneurs that listen to this and follow us. What's what's some advice you could give? Obviously, and, 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 and even if it's in the online business world, because we have created at Pip's Path a whole online, whatever you want to call it, residual income from the from the membership clubs that we have. Yeah, what yeah, would yeah. you tell an investor or an entrepreneur who's listening to this? You know, what's some of their next steps they could take? You know, I mean, some contrarian things that I believe. Um, uh, again, contrarian. Does that mean you're mad or does that mean you think things outside the box? I don't know. Whatever it is. Somebody Google that when you get off the podcast. But uh, some things that I think, too, like, especially some lessons learned lately, I think that like you got to have multiple streams of income. That's why I like memberships so much, because if you got 500 members in an online membership, you know, all of them aren't going to quit in one month. You've always got some kind of runway to make adjustments when things happen, but also just multiple streams of like businesses. Like, you know, like if you're going to own apartment buildings own two or three, what if one side of town turns South and nobody wants to rent it, man, you got to have some backup plans to the backup plans. I heard a quote once that, uh, and this might be a little too paranoid, but uh, NASA, you know, they send up, uh, it's like three oxygen tanks. You got the one you're wearing and you got two on the ship. So it's like, you know, after the third one, you're screwed right after that. But you got to have, have, have two extra oxygen tanks behind you just in case the first one goes out. Uh, that'd probably be the first thing I would. I, I would say also too, like everyone needs to tap into the online economy. There are 8 billion people on the planet and you need like 50 of them to pay you $50 a month. And you got $2,500 a month. That's like money you can you can pay a mortgage with that. You could pay a rental property with that and cash flow. You could do whatever you could do with it. Like take it. There's so many opportunities in the online space. Like it's so easy. The barriers to get online and almost anything and make money online are just so low right now. Um, you can start a YouTube channel for free. You can have a website for a hundred bucks a month. I mean, it's like, you know, you can get into the game like pretty fast and like everybody's got something they could sell um, online. And I'll tell you something I have learned um, looking back. I had a, uh, I met with my financial advisor the other day just to be like, just go over my numbers, see where we're at. I'm 45 years old. I got X years left, whatever. Let's figure it out. You know, look at the things. And um, we're in good shape. You know, I was actually kind of like, wow, we actually did an okay job. Like we own some real estate. We own some stocks. We've, he's like, you're, you're about where you need to be. You know, you could do, you could do better here and there and this, that, and the other. And, um, and one of the things that he was, was like, yeah, if you had just started investing earlier and I was like, you'd have, so you'd have this much money or this much money and that much money. And now you got to do this. And now you got to do that. And I was like, gosh, I wish somebody had told me that 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Because I would have started then, but now you got to go now. You just got to do what you can't, can't go back in time. But, um, that goes for business too. Like you can keep putting off your, your business, but you know, if you want to start a business, and you want to have a business in a year from now that can let you be an investor, quit your job, have extra margin in your life. That year is going to go whether you start now or not. And you'll, if you don't start, you'll look up in a year and nothing will be there. But if you do start investing, if you do start a business, if you do start something. So I'm kind of having that start now mentality, like any kind of new idea, like let's start now, let's figure this out now. Like, cause like, let it, let it fail fast. Like, I want to know it's going to fail as fast as possible. Cause then it like, at least I knew, but like, don't wait on stuff, man. You gotta, gotta push forward. Well, I mean, you look at where they say nine out of ten businesses fail, so that means you got to start ten. That's what yeah, it sounds man. like to me. That's yeah. right. It's yeah. pretty quick, easy math there. Okay, so you said you've done a thousand podcasts or whatever that number is. So I'm new to the being the podcast host here, so I'm learning every time I talk to somebody. What's one question that you wish I would have asked you or that I should have asked you? 
And how would you have answered it? Tough question, maybe, but definitely one that I want to know about. You know, like one thing I do that I've always done in my podcast is like ask people at the end, like, hey, based on what we talked about today, what do you think is one action you should take or, you know, our, our audience should take or something like that? Because like, I think a lot of people get listening to podcasts and they just get into a routine listening to them, but then they don't do nothing with it. Right. So it's like, that's what we've always focused on at the end. It's like, okay, how can this be the most act? Well, there's gotta be one thing um, that you can do next. You know what I'm saying? And like my format's weird, dude. I don't really ask like questions. Like I, I kind of do what you do. Like I, I have people introduce themselves and then I'll ask them usually like, about a problem they had to solve. That's where we usually start most of my shows. So it's like, you know, maybe your one of your questions might be like, hey, tell me about the biggest problem you ever had with a tenant. Okay, that might be something or whatever, you know, real estate kind of question. And then, you know, I like to go down the rabbit hole with them. I have this uh, format that I do. It's called Because of That, B-O-T, Because of That, right? So I have four Because of That after that initial question. That's how I interview. So like, I'm not really asking specific questions. I'm like, oh, the tenant locked himself and barricaded inside his ring and he wouldn't pay rent. Well, because of that, you did something. What was it? What'd you do because of that? Right. Let's like, just keep going down the rabbit hole. So like, it's not really about asking a lot of different questions. It's find the thread and unravel it. Go why, 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 why? Because of that, because of that, because of that, because of that, that's usually how you end up with a pretty good show. S sounds like a little kid. Well, why? Well, why? Exactly. Well, why? why I am a little kid. You've hung out yeah. with me. I'm a child, son. I'm in. Hey, you're, yeah, you're, you know you're, a big, a, big you're a big kid. Let's I'm go a with that. Kid, dude. So, He's yeah, definitely so a big kid. Very good. Well, I appreciate your time today, my friend. This has been awesome. I know our listeners are going to love it. And so, uh, how do people get in touch with you? What's the best way to get in touch with Shane and Jocelyn? And they probably want to get in touch with Jocelyn because so, I know she's, she's way, way smarter than Shane. A hundred percent, dude. Yeah. yeah. She, she's, she's, she, I'm just the, the dancing puppet on the stage. Not even <laughs> a good like, looking dancing not, puppet. No, no, no. Let it's one of those that. old scary yeah. wooden ones. You know what I mean? That are creepy and they sit in the corner. The, um, now all you got to do guys, if you want to, um, you know, if you're looking for a way to make some extra money and you want to start an online business, you want to start an online income, you know, you don't have to start a full blown business. You can just make some extra money on the side. Um, all you really need is an idea and take that idea to market. So I've got a free course for everybody. You can go to flippedlifestyle.com slash idea. F L I P P E D lifestyle.com slash idea. And you can watch a little train there. I've got to not only show you how to find your idea, but how to research it to see if it can make money online. And uh, you can find all the stuff that we've got over flipflopstyle.com slash idea. Awesome. Shane. Thanks so much. Before we get out of here, I just want to say again, if you haven't already subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you use guys for more investing information, go to our website, pipspath.com. Follow us on social media, Leave us a comment. Give us a follow. And we look forward to seeing you on the path. Thanks again, Shane. Have a great day, my friend. You too, brother. Good job.